So let's take a look at what I call the sign of four. Four signposts that can help us better understand our mindfulness practice in terms of what's taking place, to understand that much of what takes place is normal, it's to be expected, it's not a problem, it's not a sign that we can't do it, it's a sign that we're developing certain capacities through the practice itself. And I think that you'll find this can be helpful in that regard and as I will explore in other videos that go a little deeper into this um, sign of four way of relating to our mindfulness practice and what it is to be mindfully aware to be able to further deepen and enrich our understanding of mindfulness and its practice. So let us take a quick look at each of these four so that we can have a sense of what we will be experiencing every time or most every time we sit down and do a mindfulness practice. Some of these we will be spending much more of our time, as I'll explain, and others will be spending very little of our time, if at all, as I'll explain, and all of that is good. So. The first is a state of flowing. Um, put simply, you are immersed in your experience. In, in the world outside of a meditative practice, where this is, I think, something that we can relate to, but it's a little different, you can think of being in a state of flow, where you're playing tennis, or you're playing basketball, or some sport. And it just sort of seems effortless. Time is just passing. You're not really trying. It's sort of happening, and you're there for the happening. It has a very sort of feel, it feels good. And we tend to be somewhat optimally situated to get done whatever it is that we're intending to do in those states. Playing the, a musical instrument, again, with a certain degree of expertise or the way that we're relating to it, like a state of flow. Immersed or engrossed in a conversation with somebody that's really delightful and you know we're just not keeping track of time. It's like time just goes and we're there for the experience. So we are there for the experience. We are immersed in it. Um, and this is a state of flowing. When we do mindfulness practices, we're really not looking for this. There are wisdom traditions where single point of concentration and achieving certain states that can be very delightful in various ways and can go very, very deep and all that are very pertinent, but not really for our conversation, although I will address it in other videos. Now, a little bit more pertinent for our conversation is the state of knowing. So we move from flowing to knowing. This is not a progression. These are just four states. And the ways that they interact can barely vary, as we'll explore in time. So what is the state of knowing? Well, let's take as a classic example the mindfulness practice focused attention. It can go by other names. But the idea is that you're focusing your attention on an object. The breath is a very common object, not necessary, with the intention to stay focused on that object. And then when the mind wanders, because it certainly will, and you realize it, which you may or may not, when you realize it, the intention is, the instruction is to bring your attention back to the object. So when you are focusing on the breath, especially at the very start of a practice, you know, probably, that you are focusing on the breath. You are aware of the sensations of breathing. It is your intention to be focused on the breath. And you know it. And this is a state of knowing. Now, we will spend a bit of time here, but far less than you might think. And that's important to know, because if you do a mindfulness practice and you think this is the place to hang out or expect to be hanging out, you might be rudely awakened. Although if you know this, you might be pleasantly um, uh, experiencing what it is to practice mindfulness, to cultivate greater present moment awareness through, um, uh, through developing our, uh, and training our attention and sort of expanding the field of awareness around that attention. And that's a conversation for another day. But for example, right now, you are focusing your attention on me in all likelihood and what I'm saying or what I'm saying, yet you're aware that there's a whiteboard behind me. You're aware that there's numbers there. You're aware of other things going on, both in terms of what you see on this screen and also around you. And so we're aware of much more than we're focusing on. And again, another conversation for another day, which brings us to going. So we place our attention on an object and really to be very matter of fact, within a matter of seconds, and if not seconds, not much more than that, most people, much of the time, will be off. They'll be focusing on the breath. You probably know this from your own experience. And the mind just sort of begins to, like a little puppy dog, sort of wander off somewhere else. This is a state of going. Now, I'm going to come back to this in a moment, because this is really where all the action is in a mindfulness practice, in terms of the training and what can be developed. and 
um, a place to really get to know and understand and befriend. Um, because oftentimes we think when our mind is wandering that's a problem, when in fact sometimes it's quite the contrary. And at the same time, where mind wandering can at times be a problem, we actually can train our attention so that it wanders less. So, um, and or um, we have other uh, skills that allow us to uh, slow down and, uh, not slow down, but can um, uh, short, shorten the, the, the duration of that mind wandering. Okay. Let's talk about gone for a moment, and then we'll come back and finish off this video with a little bit more about going. So gone is where you are focusing on an object, and the mind begins to wander. And before you know it, the key, before you even know it, because this is a state where you're unaware of what's happening with your attention, you're just lost in thought. And so lost in thought, we could say, is what it is to be gone. Uh, you don't know where your attention is. Now, it's somewhere. It's like a puppy dog that's run off. It's getting into maybe trouble or having a really good time. Um, you might be fantasizing about something. You might be catastrophizing about something. But here, when this is happening, wherever it is that your mind is, you don't know where it is. You are gone. OK. So an important distinction, because when we're here, there's not a lot we can do except just sort of hope that you know somebody <laughs> knocks on the door, taps us on the shoulder, or somehow miraculously we realize it, which we can, which is an extraordinary thing. But it, it tends to be that when we're gone, it's a tall order. But when we're going, it's very different. And we can do a lot to, um, to really skillfully um, in experience and embrace moments where our mind is going. Because it could be going off to uh, realize something extraordinary. It could be going off to um, you know, gather information to help what we're thinking about or what we want to do um, you know, come to life in a certain way. And of course, it could be getting ready to wander off to you know, something that is just a worrisome thought about the future. So, three, going. Now, there's two ways of looking at uh, the mind that's going. One is that our attention is going off and we don't realize it, and then we're gone. And the other is the mind is moving off, and sooner than later, we realize it. OK. Now, I mentioned earlier about a little puppy dog. And we can think about um, this in a way that I think will be helpful for understanding what I just said. That is, we can think about the puppy dog and the way it's a little different from us, as best as we understand the brain of a puppy dog, wonderful and cuddly and cute as it is, and, and the human brain. So if you put your puppy dog down in a park and you say, stay, it may, but probably sooner than later, it will take off. Because it hears something, sees something, gets scared by something, gets excited by something. It isn't even aware that it's happening necessarily. It's just going. There's some impulse that overcomes it, and boom. Um, it's frolicking. It's barking. And that's the nature of the dog experience. Um, the dog's not going to catch itself when that's happening. You can train it over time so that it doesn't happen, and it sort of you know, unconsciously or non-consciously course corrects, but that's, that's different. Um, however, if you are watching your dog and your dog begins to wander off, you can say, ah, my dog is wandering off. I see that happening. I'm aware that that's happening. And you can then go and pick up your puppy dog and say, good puppy, come back and put it down again. Now, if we think about our mind, Oftentimes, we will say, like in a focused attention practice, hello, attention, stay. Stay on the breath. But a few moments later, or soon enough, it's off. And we're thinking about dinner, or we're thinking about our experience, or we're thinking about something from earlier in the day, or we're having images come to mind about this or that. The mind is like the puppy dog, just takes off. But unlike the puppy dog, where, which really needs us to sort of notice that it's going off, we can notice that our mind has wandered off. So going back to what I said before, the state of going has two different primary forms. The mind is going off, and we don't realize it, and then it's gone. Or the mind is going off, and we realize it soon enough that we can then do something. We have a choice. And if the practice instruction is, and when you notice your mind wandering, bringing your attention back to the breath, well, then, when we realize that it's happening, we come back to the breath. And as we'll explore in another video, the moment that we realize it's happening, we are no longer going. We've actually found ourselves in that moment, 
And we can do a couple of different things that we'll explore. We don't have to come back to the breath. There are other skillful things that we can do when we realize that our mind is wandering or has wandered away. Um, but for a focused attention practice, the thing to do more often than not is to bring your attention back to the breath. So to recap, flowing, you're just really immersed in your experience. Knowing, you place your attention on an object and you know where it is. Going, notwithstanding the fact that if we were to use the focus attention practice as a, an example, you've placed your attention on an object like the breath with the intention to stay there, the mind starts going off. And either you realize it soon enough and you come back, and then a few moments later it wanders off and you come back, wanders off and you come back. This is the way most of us will spend much of our focused attention practice, or it'll wander off and we'll be gone. Okay. Um, we could say that the difference between these two is duration, that here we catch it soon enough that we can fruitfully bring it back. Um, and here it takes so long for us to realize it that it still could be fruitful and is when we realize it, but for the sake of conceptually distinguishing these that, similar, that may have more in common than they are different, here we're lost in thought and here we have the possibility of realizing that we're about to get further and further lost in thought. It could be like a string to a kite and the kite, a gust of wind comes along and the kite just takes off. And as long as it's sort of tethered to that string, there's a chance of feeling it and bringing it back. But if the string is cut, it's gone. And you can think of this as sort of the string is there, so you sort of notice the tug of your own attention moving. And in time, you notice that um, more readily. And here, it seems like it's, you're, it's, you're pretty far gone. OK, so how long will we spend in these states? I think it can be helpful to give you a little sense that I would say, and of course, we're all different, but just to get a lay of the land, we might spend between 0 and 5% here. Again, it's not the primary objective of the mindfulness practice, the way we're exploring it. Some traditions make it more central. Um, here, really, I would say about 5 to 10%. Not a lot of time. We'll keep coming back to this place. It's sort of like home base, but we sort of take off. Now here, it might be around um, 20 to uh, 40% where we're here and going. And then I would say, gone, actually, 50 plus percent. So when you sit down to do your mindfulness practice and you focus your attention on the breath, before you know it, you're going to be going. And you might end up being gone and then realize it at some point in time. Sometimes we realize it when the timer goes off and uh, the practice is over. Or a voice that we're listening to that's guiding us says, and if your mind is wandering, bring your attention back. Helpful little you know, ways of, of, of realizing, helping us realize or notice that our mind has wandered. Um, but much of the time, especially as we practice, and this is the real point of practice, or one of the primary points of practice, every time, and this is key, every time you notice that your mind has wandered, which is really an extraordinary thing. Like, how did you notice? Like, how did the puppy dog somehow catch itself? How did we realize that we were off? Every time that happens, it reinforces that happening again. And I think in time, we find that each time it's reinforced, we then begin to notice it sooner and sooner and sooner and sooner. And we begin to have greater capacity to bring our attention back. Because as we'll explore in another video, sometimes you realize that your mind is wandering, or you realize that you're off task, but you sort of can't help yourself. And off you go, notwithstanding the fact that there's a le at least a little bit of awareness that that's been happening. So starting out, you're going to spend a lot of time lost in thought. You're going to spend a decent amount of time, at least on the way to getting lost in thought, with the potential to catch it. And because it is the intention. And the instruction, if you notice your mind wandering, bring your attention back here, which then brings us back to here for at least a few moments. And maybe sometimes we might land here. Now, as I'll explore in another video, sometimes we're really tired and our attention sort of dulls out. That's not a state of flow, but it's also not a state of being gone, it's not a state of going, and it's not a state of knowing. It's sort of a dulled out state that we can also inhabit that can be confused with flowing. But we'll save that for another day. All right. I hope this is helpful. Let me share with you that if you practice 
on a fairly regular basis, I think what you'll find is this. This number here actually goes up um, to 20 to 60% of the time. And this number here goes down to like 30 to 40% of the time, something like that. Um, and you might say, well, wait a minute. I'm in going more often. I've been practicing. I, my mind keeps going. Well, going is that state where you really have the capacity to notice that you're going, to wake up out of that discursive thought pattern, and to bring your attention back. And so actually to have this number go up because this number's going down is an extraordinary set of changes that are being made, this sort of self-directed neuroplasticity, changes to the structure and function and activity of the brain as a result of the way we are choosing to pay attention to our experience. All right, I hope this is helpful. More to come on the sign of four.